Hi everybody, welcome to a new series of tutorials on Bliss Motion FX. As always, before I start, I have a number of codes to give away, so please do follow the instruction in the video description and also check in the comments section in the oldest comment or first comment to see if I have already announced the winners or if the competition is still open. So, as the name says, it's a motion effect, so it gives you the ability to change effects parameters through a sequencer that you can see here on the screen. It is an AUV free compliance application. At the moment, I'm running it in a standalone mode because I have more space on the screen. Running it in a standalone mode, it gives you the ability to have um, some uh, um, waveform or samples already loaded like this one. Okay, you have 10 there, which is good to have for demonstration purposes. Of course, you can enable to have uh, mic um, the microphone on and capture the input from there, if you like so, your navigation controls here, play backwards, beginning or next, etc. As you can see, you can move from one sample to the other, previous one, next one, and play. That is where you see your sample being played as well. The position here you can upload um, or import other samples. You can op open others as well as you prefer. You have some settings here for buffer size, tempo, and also your sync with able to link or by able to link and you have some information on the application of course at the bottom here is the code the application you have beside the name and the version here is where you select your preset so and there are a number of presets which are quite nice so please do try some of them and uh, you have a function which has been introduced recently in a lot of the application from Bliss to randomize parameter, which is great. You click, and you can see it's randomized some parameters, so it's good for exploration purposes. So um, do try that. Now, and as you can see here, you have a number of effects, low pass, high pass, band pass, volume, pan, Pitch. You can see each in the parameters of changes as I move on, frequency shifter, ring modulation, warmth, crusher and delay. So what they have in common is this sequencer and um, you can all run multiple effects at the same time. But I have to say because it runs with uh, low um, it has a very low limited CPU um, requirement so you can load a lot of these uh, in i don't know uh, aum and then it gives you quite a lot of flexibility in that case but and therefore you can run multiple effects with through different auv free instances but um each each effect run a shared a sequencer the, and share some parameters like the length and the number of steps you have here like eighth the resolution is how fast the play goes. Okay, you can change the value of um, uh, the parameter in question. In this case, uh, the frequency of low pass, up and down, like so. You can snap it to grid, like so. You can reset it, and then if you are familiar with the sequencer, which has been introduced in other Bliss application, you know that you can change the type of step. So you have a step which uh, you have link like this one so they're linked together okay let's do the nap on but you can change it to have ascending descending etc this one is a new one which they introduced so it's quite nice because it allows you to have a smoother uh, connection with one step to the other which is nice here you can set the amount of how the sequencer will influence the effect the randomness in terms of playing a particular step and also the smoothness as you move from one step to the other so on the right hand side here you have a specific parameter to the effect that you have selected in this case for low pass high pass and bend pass you have resonance but of course as you move to other effects in some cases you don't have anything like the volume in the case of pitch you have grain size but also grid which is quite nice in terms of scale and you have a overall mix for dry and wet effect so let's um, let me give you some examples. So let's load um, I don't know something like on low pass. 
uh, the Dunsim filter and let's play. <laughs> nice this one which is acting on volumes of course as you can see let's try others as well <laughs> And as you can see, as the sequencer is moving through the steps, you can see the value of the particular step changing in this vertical bar. So that's quite cool. So I'm going to stop here for this introductory, for this part one, and then what I'm going to do, instead of just going through controls by controls, I'm probably going to create uh, tutorials like use cases. So for example, how could you use the pitch effect and how and where would you use it in your composition? I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Bye.